This is Dave Bortner, Freedom Boat Service. We're celebrating our 10th anniversary in business, and we happened to run across these cassette tapes that were produced as part of the Antique Motorboating Symposium, uh, March 31st through April 2nd of 1995 at the Mariner's Museum. We thought it would be a wonderful opportunity to digitize these presentations by icons and luminaries of our hobby. We hope you enjoy listening to them and uh, join us in celebrating our 10 years in business. Thanks. On this next tape, we have Joe Cabot uh, walking us through the evolution of styling uh, and design and lofting and all sorts of interesting stuff uh, from the earliest boats through pre-war barrel backs. And Joe, of course, is somebody who was there and saw it with his own eyes, so it's a really fascinating look into the early years of Chris Craft. Now, one of the earliest uh, runabouts, this is probably 1922. The particular boat, when you went from the race boat to the launch, if you notice, the, they moved the cockpit forward. This had been about the first year. Uh, you can notice how small the cockpit is. The steering wheel, the the seats are pleated. It's a large area in the back with the wicker chair and the ventilator, type ventilators here. And also how the bow light is used as a mooring uh, line with the front scoop and the fair leader. And notice how narrow the boat is with the high crown in the front deck and in the rear, no windshield. All right, here's the boat out in the lobby. <clears throat> That's the first one we could probably identify with a windshield. Now look at the frame on the windshield. Now it is not part of the boat itself. It's a frame that sits on top. Can you make that a little clearer maybe? Can you focus that just a little bit? I guess that's the best we can do. But anyway, when you go out to the lobby, look at Miss Belle Island, you'll see that that windshield frame sits on top of the boat. Here again, high crown with the seats that are pleated and two cockpit forward. Now this is about 1925. Here you see the high crown with pleated seats and also the three ventilators in the engine compartment for the OX-5 engine. The rear cockpit area, the pleats again, showing the dog bone uh, gas caps and the seats and the uh, pads. There's no name on the pad. This is the fleet. For 1926 or 7, the 22, the 24, 26, and 28 foot. Now, the difference the 22, two vents, 24, two vents, three vents, three vents, 26, 28. This is a uh, 1926 or 7, showing the windshield side supports. And here on the step pads, you start to see a name on the step pads. Still continues to have a high crown. Now, this is the first time we saw about 1926 with the Chris Craft Corporation on the side. 
26 model, here again with the windshield frame, three side vents, and the top. I'd like to talk a little bit about the tops. We have a fellow here today that's probably done more research, and that's Dave Moore. And uh, Dave's done more research on convertible tops and sedans than anyone. And he has a lot of uh, information that he's uh, given to the museum here in his research articles and so forth. So if you have a question on tops, Dave is the fellow that can really help you out. Tom has the information here in the museum. This is a 26-footer. Here's an interesting shot. See the different configuration with the sedan top? First time you ever seen the one in the uh, convertible top for the rear cockpit. Being shipped out of the country, which Chris Kraft did, they shipped car, uh, boats all over. And it's interesting here, look at this truck. And the original shipping cradle, and look at how it extends over the back to be shipped. I think we'd get a little nervous going down the road with that today. Can you imagine that on I-75 or 95 or one of those roads? <laughs> Here's a different way <clears throat> that they had to ship it, and of course they, they swapped ends, and this probably is a little bit more practical. But here again, you can see the type of shipping cradle that Chris Kraft did use. And in later years, I'm sure some of you probably still have your original cradle. What wood were they made out of? Shipping cradles. What would they normally make those out of? I would. Or oak or pine? I, I would say probably more inexpensive wood, which probably would be pine. I don't know. We'll have to ask Chris that. Chris, what do you think they were made out of? Yes. Okay. Right. Now here again is a an early boat. About a twenty seven or twenty eight. Let's look at the windshield supports. And also it's interesting that probably many of you haven't seen this way to moor a boat, but this was the way they did it years ago off the bow leg. Many boats were moored that way. But still, look at the high crown in the deck, and also here by the engine compartment. And the step pads, of course, that do say Chris Craft. No frames on the step pads. Now here's another, this is about, I think this is a 24-footer, 1928. And this shows how uh, the boats were used. You know, we talked about a little bit earlier, what do you want the boat to do for you? Well, this is a good example. These people wanted to enjoy the boat. They wanted to have a picnic. And here again, the windshield frame. Step pads, no frame around the step pads. This is a two-holer. Golf shoes. That's right. There it is, eh? That's her firm footing. <laughs> yeah, right there. <laughs> there's, a, there's an interesting thing on the uh, stern pole globe. You see, that's what everybody looks for. They're hard to find. Anybody got an extra? <laughs> now, here's something probably a lot of you have heard. Uh, about this particular boat, and nobody has really seen it lately. And that's a 1928, this was the Chris Craft race boat that they advertised for sale. I think there was only one, uh, one that was made, and I think this is the boat. But you notice the step here? It's a 26-footer, two cockpit, and it has a different configuration for the intake for the engine compartment. Uh, it has different ventilator up here also on top. Uh, the windshield is raked, long deck, and also look at the difference in the, for all you experts, look at the difference at the bow leg. Also here at the cup water. Now 
what's really unique about this boat is that windshield disappears. You see how it moves down here? For racing. This is the windshield frame bracket. The windshield is down inside. There's the your gauge panel. There's a clock. Look at the large wheel there. That's a little different configuration. Still has quite a high crown over here in the engine compartment. And that was the early, it was the, uh, I think that was that big six zone they were running in there. I think Peter remembers that engine. Now here's when you talk about commuters. This fellow lived over on Harsons Island over by Pete. You probably knew him, Pete. But he would uh, fly into Detroit, go to work, fly back, and had his boat pick him up. It's a 28 foot, 1929. The, the engine vents would, in that configuration would tell us it's a 29. Uh, so you could see the engines, or the boats themselves, uh, were used for a lot of different things. So why do we want a boat? There's another example. This is a 24-footer uh, with a special top. And here again, they had a uh, very uh, many variations of sedan-type tops. And Dave is really an expert on this area. Uh, I wish we had time for him to come up here and tell us about a couple of them, but we don't have the time today. But maybe at a later date, Dave, you can tell us about them. Here's a 26-footer. This is the old Chris Craft plant, and that tower is still standing uh, at Algonac. Look at the old car. So that gives you an idea. The boats look more modern compared to the car. This is a uh, 1928 or 9, 24 foot with a two hole engine compartment with a crow top, round bow light. And here again, you can see how they use that bow light for a mooring area. There's a 26 footer, 1929, in the showroom. Now there looks like some very good happy salesmen, at least. They're looking for a buyer. Anybody want to buy it? Now here's another example of a uh, top that they offered. This is closed up. The step pads, this is a 26-footer, 1929. And here you can see in 29 already, they started the frames around the step pads, and they were pressed out. Fan stop, there it is, see, he knows. Now what top's that, David? There it is. This actually lifts up uh, to give you some uh, air in the back, or if you want to make it fully closed, you pull that down. And this here is a... Uh, 1929, and here in 28 they started on this particular model, 28 through 31, with the upswept at the rear cockpit with the uh, club box configuration here. And they had different fuel caps. They went away from the dog bone to the uh, this type. Here's a, an example of the inside, what the cockpit looked like. Steering wheel, the ignition switch, the five gauge panel, the hatch up front. And this is interesting because uh, that tells us something different. It's not a round bow line. So the reason why that is because that's a 28 footer. You see the side running lights? Great windshield, and this is interesting because it has the side wings here. 
And here are the robe lamps in some storage area here. And here again, the frame around the step head. Now here's another 28 footer. This happened to be a 1929 with a different top configuration. And the bow light is more streamlined with a spotlight. Now the reason why I showed you a, a little variation of all these different tops, Chris Craft provided anything that you wanted. And they tried to make it comfortable and Dave, through his research, has found most of the sedans and so forth were shipped to New York area. Uh, I suppose because of the inclement weather, running into the salt water and et cetera. There's another configuration of the top. Here's a little 17-footer. This is Slick Cockpit 1930 with a four-spoke wheel. Now this is the 1930-20-footer, three cockpit, two hole in the showroom in, uh, I think this was New York. This is a 24 footer uh, on the cradle. Uh, it gives you an idea of what this line is on the bottom and how the entry is into the water. Now, I don't have the offsets for this particular boat. I'm sure somebody else has them elsewhere so you get an idea how that would ride in the water, but you can see that it does have quite a, a belly or hog in there, if you want to call it. And of course, like most of you know, you have been around boats, that's to keep you riding high in the bow. Now this is another configuration of a 24-footer. And if you notice now, we've changed into the windshield frame here. So that's 1930. It's a 1930, 26-foot on the cradle. Here again, I selected this to show you the bottom view. But here you can get a pretty good idea of the graining of the wood that they used at that time. They match fairly well. Now here's another top configuration. This is a 1931, 26 footer. Now, in 31, they went to the deluxe hardware on the 26 footer. The vents, of course, would indicate it's after 30, but this hardware is the deluxe. And over here also on the lifting ring, it has a little tail on it. This is the inside of that same boat. Now you see they even have armrests here, cutouts into the side. So it is a deluxe model for 1931 and the streamlined uh, light along with your lifting ring. Now this this is a 28 footer with the side lights with the streamlined hardware which they did have early on. There's the same bolt with the top, convertible top, sedan top. But here again, look at the graining in the wood. Okay, now the next area that we get into, that's the end of the early runabouts. That was, as I indicated, from 1922 or 3 up to 1931. The next era, which probably most of you relate to, we call it the level riding era. That's 1932 to 1938. Uh, the Chris Craft catalog for 32 indicated there's something new on the water. And this is what they were referring to. Uh, 
like to read a few things to you from the catalog. It says, level riding at high speed is a goal that has long been sought in the motorboat industry, nor was it attained overnight by Chris Craft Solution of the problem has come as a development from Chris Kraft's 45 years of boat building experience and from a program of constant experiment and testing in, great, in the great plant at Algonac. Now, they don't just call it a plant. They call it the great plant. Chris Kraft, for 32 with level riding in all models, brings to owners a thrill of enjoyment that no stock model runabout has ever before offered. A level ride is a dry and safe ride. Application of the new level riding principle is cut to a minimum, water resistance and stern drag at high speeds. The new Chris Craft develop more speed per horsepower and more speed per foot. Drivers and passengers have a clear horizontal range of vision and at low speeds the bows of these boats ride well out of the water. So on this slide, we have uh, the 32 level riding fleet. The first one is the 15 and a half foot, the 18, the 21, the 25, and the 27. Now you notice 21, 21 foot. That's the first, that's a new application, new length for Chris Craft. The 25 footer replaced the 26 footer. The 27 replaced the 28 footer. So if you notice the difference now in the combing, the combing is lower on both the 25 and 27 foot. And also the cockpit configuration is a little square here on the 25, rounded on the 27. Square here. Split cockpit 18 foot, split cockpit 15 and a half. That's the 15 and a half model. This was the uh, 1932, the 18 foot model, split cockpit. That's the 21 foot, three cockpit, 1932. If you notice the hardware change, you have the streamlined hardware. This windshield is a V windshield, small frames on the side. On the uh, step pads, the frames, new ventilators, and it's got a little bit of a tumble home. There's no, no, there's no combing on that engine, right? That's one of the streamlined lead bank up there, man. Well, here on the 25 and the 27, this is the 25. It has a little bit of a combing here. Same way here on the 27. Two ventilators for the 25, four for the 27. Cockpits are round, they're square on the 25. Round, round, square. Also, the uh, navigational lights over 26 feet were split lights, port and starboard. There you are. 25, bow light. Now, who is this, uh, Chris? Do you know? That's your brother, isn't it? This is a 25-footer uh, with the windshield down, but still, you notice the high crown in the deck, also in the engine compartment. We got it reversed, though. That's the uh, same boat, 25-footer, on the cradle. To give you an idea of the... Uh, the bottom with the entry into the water. That's better, thank you. No sign lights, there was were handles to help you get on for the windshield support. There's another good shot. This gives you a, from the front end view to show you the entry into the water.
But you can see the boat, design-wise, to make it a level riding, it rides uh, quite a bit back in this area. That's the same boat uh, with a different uh, side showing to you. Now here's the 27-footer with the side lights in the instrument panel. This is when they went to the uh, six gauge panel. And the uh, step pad frames are higher, of course, with the little combing and the scuff plate. Also, on the 27 footer, they utilized, instead of the binding, as we all know, these are metal bindings. This was really a super deluxe model. There's a better view of the instrument panel along with the wheel. Now there's another thing you might notice. The steering wheel is at a different location. Before, well, before that uh, wheel was over here on the left side, now in 32 it's been switched over here to the starboard side. Uh, I don't really. I think it was from a navigational standpoint. Now here again, this is a boat that could be used by the entire family. And I might mention, you know, in boating, it is really a family affair. If you have children and so forth, it's a good way to, to get them all together. At least you got them for a while. I don't know how long you can keep them there, but you got them for a little while. Here again, this is a, uh, a smaller boat. Uh, I think this is the 18-footer. But notice the high crown. And these boats continue to utilize the high crown until later on, and I'll show you that. Uh, Tom, can you focus that a little bit better? At somehow that we're not getting too good a focus out of that. a little better, thank you. Is that better? Now that's a uh, different uh, gauge pattern there, but also on the steering wheel, that's a nice four-spoke wheel here again with the step pad frames. This is the 27-footer with the rear windshield, high deck crown, and here's something, uh, these gas tank covers with the streamlined covers that they came out in 32 for the 27 footer with the side running lights. There's another example of that with a spotlight. And here on the lifting ring, you can see how streamlined it is. And the uh, instrument panel and the running lights. This is really a deluxe uh, boat this 27 footer and also the chocks up here with the fair leader now this is an interesting one I bet nobody's seen three windshields on the boat first second third There's a little 16 footer, about 1934 or 5. Here's the uh, 20, let's see, I think that's the 21 footer in here. Right. No, that's the uh, 1935. 22 footer with the uh, crow top. You see uh, 1935 and 1937 
19 foot. The bottom is the uh, 37. You can start to see where we're getting into a little bit of the barrel back. Yeah, I think you're right. It is opposite. Right. Agree with you. All right, this would be a 1937, 22 foot. Uh, to show you the instrument panel, we were talking about that engine turning. Uh, that somebody was talking about earlier. Most of these panels had the engine turning on them, along with the Chris Craft emblem here. Here again, you had the uh, windshield frame, along with the step pads. Still a high crown, and uh, handles for the engine compartment. There's a couple of the smaller runabouts, uh, 17, 1937. View of the stern barrel positions here coming in. 25 footer on top. And here, if you notice, in 1937, on the 25 footer, remember the earlier one I showed you were squared off cockpits? They're round now, here on the second and the first, and also the rear one. Now here's the 25 and the 27 run next to each other. This is over in the uh, Algonac area. Now here's, this is an interesting boat. This 1937, 27 foot, twin engines, twin Chrysler 8. You can see how happy this boat owner is. You see how the big smile? I suppose all you f ladies and fellows out there have the same idea, don't you, smiling? She's happy, too. She's raising her hand. Now, this must be one of the Chris Crap workers. He's not so happy. But this uh, particular boat, uh, by the way, this was the only one made with twin engines, this particular boat, 1937. Yeah. Yes. Yes, to my knowledge, most of them were, Terry. I think this boat is still out there. Is uh, somebody still looking for it, I think? You've been looking for that boat, Terry? No, I'd quit looking because somebody already has it. Now, there was a gentleman that's here that owns this boat. J.D., this is a... Uh, 1935 or 36, I think, 36 19-foot special race boat. And this is what Wilson was talking about earlier on his presentation on the 19-foot uh, race boat. And it did have a little different bottom, so it, it rode a little different than the later version, uh, the post-war boat. And here again, you can see the configuration. Uh, the rear cockpit is all covered, but it utilizes the same instrument panel as the 25 and 27 foot. There it is again. But you can see how the barrel stern is starting to come into the picture here in 1936. Quite a nice bow, even though it's straight up, up the front. And here it gives you an idea on the manner in which it runs in the water. Now, this is a beautiful shot here. I must have got that in upside down. <laughs> but the reason I showed this is because this was a special boat. This was an 18-footer that was shipped to, uh, over to France to a special uh, boat club over there. And if you notice, there's no rails. It's uh, canvas covered here on the rail and also on the spray rail, on the cover board and the spray rail. Thank you, Tom. Now, these are uh, vents, special vents for this particular boat. And it had side running lights on it with no bow light. Now, here's the 1938. This was a special 22-foot boat with twin engines, twin KB engines, twin 
uh, instrument panel. It's a banjo wheel. Uh, it's a five-spoke wheel. And uh, storage space here. And no rear seat. So that shows you a little different configuration that Chris Crab had to offer. Now, we're starting to get into the barrel banks. Okay, the barrel banks were from 1939 to 1942. The changes in the hull design from the level riding to the more modern streamlined appearance was also gradual. The modern barrel banks transom and rounded covering board hulls emerged in the 3940 models and continued through the last models produced in 1942 when the civilian uh, production ceased for World War II. Now the top view is a 19 foot 1939 and the bottom is a 1937. So you can see we're starting to get more into the barrel bank. These are both 22-foot boats. Now, in the 39, we went to the Bugatti windshield, straight windshield for 37. That's a 19-foot runabout with the Bugatti windshields down. This was the 19-foot special runabout with the V windshield and the rear seat facing rearward. Now that's the 19 foot boat and this is too, and that's a 33 foot Chris there. But I uh, kind of limit my presentation to the runabouts, but I wanted to show you that there is differences in the utilities. And usually you can see they are a little higher in the front, a little wider boat. So it does give you a little bit more room for people in the boat. getting into the barrel backs now, both 19-footers. Somebody was asking me about a one-piece covering board. That's a one-piece covering board. There's no seam in this. Now, the early boats in 39 had the single piece of wood there. And later, they had a seam in the 39 model, and then from then on in 1940. But you can see how the barrel back is coming into play. That's a 1940, 23 foot barrel back with the Bugatti windshields, two horns, and the uh, let's see, configuration is up here. Let me try the next shot. No, it doesn't have it. Well, that's a 39, 22 footer. They made the change in, uh, from 1939 to 1940 uh, from a 22-foot triple like this to a 23. And uh, here again, they have the one-piece covering board. Now, this is the little 16-foot barrel bank. This is 1939. They came out with this boat in 1936. Now they were painted, most of them were painted red, white, and blue, but there were a few natural uh, boats of this configuration. Uh, this probably was really one of the most true barrel backs. So you could say probably 1936 was the first year that the uh, barrel back was uh, come into play with Chris Graff. And they use this, they call this a little 16-foot special race boat. Uh, the rear cockpit, as you can see, was covered also like the 19-footer. This is the 1940 27-foot barrel bank. Now, in 1940, they went to this design over in the front, still a straight bow, and this is probably the only boat that I know that has this treatment here. It's a little different. The Gotti windshields. Uh, and also in 1940, 
they had was the only year on the on the 23 and the 27 footer they used bird's eye maple for the instrument panel as a standard boat. Now there are variations because there were some uh, special boats. There are a couple out there Tahoe. Instead of having the Bugatti windshields, they have a, uh, a windshield like a Sportsman, the V. And I suppose they were ordered because of the weather conditions out there. Also, these boats, most of them, they, if you notice, there's no white striping. They had green stripes. Most of them had green stripes to match the trim on the inside. There were a few that had orange stripes also. Now, this particular boat, if you notice, only has a single exhaust pipe. Um, 27 footer 1940 they made five boats four of them had the A120 and one had the W block this particular boat here with the single exhaust had the W and that boat today is called Silver Wake I'm sure some of you have seen the boat this is 1941 these, these are the 17, the 19, and the 23. It had a different windshield, different rounded bow, except for the 17 footer, which they continued to use the straight bow. Lay down windshield, which made a nice feature. Uh, a lot of tumble home, same as the 40, but as you notice, it's got the two piece covering board and the white stripes. In 1940, this is a 41 model with the blue face gauges. 39 was the last year that the instrument panel, that they used the panel as such. So in 1940, they went to individual gauges. So 1940, 41, 42 had individual gauges. And most of those were blue and white face gauges. There were some that were sober, but most were blue and white. They had the banjo wheel, the four spoke wheel on the deluxe model. Yes. Yes. Most of them were were dark. There are some uh, here. Most of them were dark, but I've seen some people have refinished them as natural. But you could have had it natural from the factory without dark covering boards. So they weren't walnut. No, they weren't walnut. They were just stained. All those uh, that wood was all stained. Like all those dark covering boards that you see, they're just stained boards. Stained walnut color. This is a 1941 16 foot hydro. If you notice the step here, it's similar to the 16 foot, that special race boat, the red, white, and blue one. It does have a little different, there's no rear cockpit. It looks like it's a little wider, which it is, and it has a step in the bottom. And of course, I think about 18, 16 or 18, somewhere in there. Not very many. Uh, they built them in 1941 and 1942. And of course, this is the some of the fleet running. And uh, as you know, you, uh, most of you here have seen this picture. If you got one of the brochures, because it's on the brochure. But that is a nice, nice picture. It's one of my favorites. And we got to go back. I have to keep going here until I get to that. Can I go to that other one, Tom, right there, Chris Smith? That, that would, yeah, but see, I'd have to go all the way through it. So let me go forward. That would be the, uh, it'd be at zero, it'd be one reverse and zero, okay. There, it should be there. No. Okay, I'm I'm getting there. Hang on. Okay, as we started out, now we all remember this fellow. Now, after going through the presentation, what year boat is that? Uh, let me hear. 26, 27. Well, you're close. See, so you did pay attention. I didn't see everybody sleep, but I did catch a couple heads nodding. But thank you for your presentation. I appreciate it. 
and I hope that we had a chance to impart some information to you. Uh, I'd like to answer any questions you might have. Sir? What? Let, let, want to give him the mic? Who had the question? I don't know that. I don't know why they painted the bootstripe on the cut. Well, I can't answer that one. <laughs> Any other questions? Well, thank you for your attention. Thanks for listening. Copyright 1995 by the Antique Boat Museum and the Antique and Classic Boat Society. Audio copyright 2019 Freedom Boat Service, LLC.